Good afternoon. Um, thank you for showing up. My name is Monoku. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I'm a filmmaker, an artist, visual artist, and also a writer. Um, before I delve into the, the slides, um, I just want to give a background on what I wanted to share with you this afternoon. Uh, not so complex. I just wanted to talk about art and um, how it's taken shape in Kenya, in Nairobi. And um, we've not had the privilege of some, like other countries do, where art has been received uh, positively. Uh, and not just as a form of activism, but uh, as, as art itself. We have a very, um, I don't know if it's colonial hangover, but uh, the, most of the, the courses uh, that get uh, praised for are not the arts and more of the academic courses and other professional courses like medicine, architecture. So when in, if you are in my country, if you are in my generation, the 80s born generation and before, uh, growing up and if you, uh, if you were to tell your parents, I want to be an artist, they would look at you and wonder, are you serious? That's a hobby. That's not something you do. So we're glad that that has changed over the decades and right now art is being slowly accepted as a profession in itself, but more importantly, as a tool um, that can be transformative. And that's why uh, I'm here today to talk about, actually the title of my talk was actually Art is a Blast. And literally, it is a blast because it blows you off your feet. I mean, it's, it's so amazing when you get involved in art. It's also a blast because you enjoy doing it. So it's a blast from within and it's it's a blast from without because of the effects it has. And one of the um, landmark moments in my life was in class two. When I was eight years old, I was caught drawing in my math book. And, uh, and the teacher was really upset. Oh, it was a big deal, everything. And she actually punished me. But I didn't understand that at that age. Why? OK, why am I being punished? I'm just drawing. I love it. Uh, but she, later I'm like, oh, yeah, it's math. You're not meant to drain your math book. But all these things, um, I, I, I go back home, my parents correct me and everything. But later on, um, I come to understand that this is what I really am good at. This is what I really love doing. And much later, I got involved in that. And just not as a form of self-expression only, but I realized that it's much more powerful than that, that art is... Um, is transformative. You can use it to tell stories. You can use it to mirror social issues. And fast forward to now, and or fast forward to this time where I find myself working with uh, a group of artists, Mau Mau Collective. We are using this art in a transformative way. And how we do this is by creating a network. And how do we do this? We are starting with, as they say, charity begins at home. So we want to bring African artists together. Or rather, even before we go to Africa, we want to bring Kenyan artists together, and then East African artists. And hopefully, we can have these regional blocks. And the, the rationale behind this, even way before I thought of Mau Mau, is if there could be region, <coughs> sorry, economic blocks, like we have economic blocks in Africa. We have ECOWAS, we have COMESA, and so on, Africa Union. Why can't we have creative blocks? And, and, the, and the, the, the principle is the same. Uh, united, you tend to have more power than working as individuals. And that's another problem we have in our country. Most artists and activists tend to be lone rangers. They tend to work in isolation. I don't know why, but that's the case. And that's something we're, we're trying to break that habit. And we're trying to say, no, if you work alone, you may not have access to certain resources. If we worked alone at Mau Mau, we would have not done anything, actually. Because I can't do some things. I'm not good at some things. Some of my, my colleagues are not good in others. But together, we, we, we share our skills and we're able to create a product. And, and that's uh, a very big part of why uh, we do what we do. And that's why we want to create a network from inside, moving out. And uh, that's why I like forums like these, because being able to connect with other people, doing the same thing, like in Brazil, Fora, and the and also the index, they actually do the same thing. The contexts may be different, but if you look at the gist of it, it's, it's actually the same thing. And uh, just to mention last week uh, in Kenya, and it's, it's really interesting that in, uh, Daniel spoke about censorship, because last week in Kenya, 
there was a film bill that was proposed that would have really emasculated the industry. And I mean, it's a whole long story, but the long and short of it is that stakeholders, artists, and filmmakers, and other creatives went for, went, confronted the Kenya Film Commission, which is actually the parastatal charged with uh, regulating uh, the industry, and said, no, we cannot have such a bill, because the bill was leaving literally full control of content creation, distribution, exhibitions, at the behest of the government parastatal, which is the Kenya Film Commission. And there's nothing wrong with parastatals. I mean, they have a function, but they, they must involve stakeholders. And it was a very humbling experience to see all these creatives come up in, and say no. And, and as it were, it was actually no. And if you even check on Twitter, it was a stop the film bill hashtag everywhere in Kenya, and it actually stopped, at least for now. And those are some of the ways which uh, I feel, again, back to what I was saying earlier, solidarity works better than individualism, or rather if people being in their own silos, doing their own thing, not aware of the other. Because here we had filmmakers, we had visual artists, graffiti artists, people who don't ordinarily work in the same space, feeling so uh, touched uh, by this thing and coming out and saying no. So Mau Mau Collective, now I can jump into the slides. I'm so, you're tired of seeing my face. I can move into the slides. Is um, I don't know if this is working. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, basically, I don't, what you see here is just like a collage of what we do. We focus on three main areas. That's film, performing arts, and visual arts. Visual arts to include traditional art like fine art, um, graffiti as well. Performing arts to include spoken word, music, and other alternative forms, and, uh, and film but film also to include non-fiction work and documentary making. And, and our goal, or rather our vision, is to, as, as, it, as it were, to create a network of these individuals, of these creatives in these three, three areas of focus. And we are very pan-African in our outlook. Not to say, I know using the word pan-African may sound a bit misleading at times because it has some other connotations, but pan-African just in as much as we are bringing African creatives together, that's all. And the idea is to do uh, to, uh, what we are doing inside Rit Large. So whatever we can do as Africans eventually, we can do globally. So it's a domino effect starting from inside Kenya, East Africa, Africa, globally. And we focus on creative education. We appreciate the role of learning the craft Many people in Kenya do not learn the craft. They make a few films, they produce a few songs, they get, a few, they get attention, they become a bit of a celebrity here and there, and they stop learning the craft. But it's very important to keep honing your skills. This morning I had a conversation with a young actress who did one of my short films, of which I'll show at the end of my presentation, the trailer that is. And she was telling me she's back, actually, funny enough, here in London, studying acting. She's doing a master's in acting. And I was really humbled by that because she acknowledges that she's not yet reached uh, the level of proficiency where she can say, I've had it, I'm the best. And that uh, eagerness to keep learning is one of the core values we have. Art for social change, Pan-Africanism. pan, pan is just a word we coined, a word play on art and Pan-Africanism. And independence. Independence to mean uh, not just um, like in the political sense, but even psychological independence. As an artist, if you know that your art can stand for itself, can speak for itself, you can make money from your art. It's your bread and butter. You don't have, it, it's not like your side gig or your side hustle, which is the case right now, but we hope to change that. We hope to change the narrative such that your art can make uh, money for you. And uh, again, what I said earlier, you have to learn the craft. If you are content with what level of proficiency you've reached at, you, you're not open to learning. I don't mean to be very ph philosophical, but if, if your cup is full, you, you cannot add anything to it. And that's the same philosophy behind uh, creative education. You just have to keep learning. The first project we did, by the way, we are less than a year old. We are infants. 
the idea has been there for a while. I've been working in the space for a while, but Mau Mau itself has, is actually going to be a year old next month in November. The first project we did was in an area in Nairobi called Korogocho. I, with a couple of friends, graffiti artists uh, and local uh, residents, we decided to do an installation opposite a police station. And it was very figurative. You'll probably see this later as we engage. It was talking about how art can liberate you. And it was a semi-abstract piece. And that was the first activity we did as Mau Mau. And at first, the, it was a bit tense doing a graffiti piece in broad daylight opposite a police station. But what allowed us to do this is the fact that the community was involved. And no policeman will stand against a community. Trust me. So that was the first uh, time we actually did something as a collective, or rather branded as Mau Mau. But even before I continue, I forgot to tell you why we are called Mau Mau. I don't know if some of you know Kenya's history. Um, maybe you don't, but uh, Kenya was colonized by, the, by Britain, it, it, I, I, funny enough. And, but uh, the, thing is <laughs> the thing is this. One of the groups that fought for independence was called Mau Mau. And, and uh, among other groups. So I chose the name Mau Mau just, because, just as they were revolutionary then. We are revolutionary now. They used guns. They were fighting guerrilla style in the bush. We use paintbrushes. We use guitars. We use our spoken word. We use our graffiti. And we are fighting a different war right now. And the war is more of an ideological one. And that's why we are called Mau Mau. Uh, Again, this was the second time we did something in Jericho. I mean, I can go on forever, but I have only 10 minutes, which I think is almost up. But one powerful story that came from this was we did a series of murals everywhere. And this particular mural, as you can see, these are houses. And um, they are, it's a whole neighborhood. This is another house. There are many houses. There are no fences. So. And it's, it's, a, it's a very tricky kind of neighborhood as well. And this particular wall belonged to a gang, a gang called Vietnam. I mean, like Vietnam, you know, Vietnam, the Vietnam War. And at the top of the piece, there was a, it was written, or rather before we did the piece, there was Vietnam written, and we didn't know what it meant. But when we started doing the graffiti, someone came and walked up to us and said, hey, you guys, what are you doing? This is, what, what, don't, don't erase that. Then we're like, why? No, you don't, just, you don't erase that. Slowly, another three people, four people, and we're like, oh, okay, what's going on here? And we realized we were confronting a gang, and they told us, this is Vietnam. This is where we have our base. This is where we chill out. You guys don't just come and do this. But then again, just like I said before, just because we had done a series of other installations everywhere, the community, the owners of the houses, the, the neighborhood youth who are not in the gang, came up and said, no, you guys, now they told the gang, they were like, you guys, no, we, will, we want this artwork. This is beautiful. We, 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 we don't want Vietnam anymore. And strangely enough, again, we thought we would conf have some violent conf altercation or something, but the gang actually had to back down. You can't stand up against the whole community. And we finished the piece, and we replaced the word with victory. And again, later, we, we, I'll share more information with you. There's a mini documentary about this. You can get more information. Uh, well, this is a bit conceited, but that's the team. Um, um, yeah, so my partner is Asha. She's a co-director with me as well. And finally, as I close, I'll show you a trailer to a short film we produced a few months ago called Kaleidoscope. And that's another thing we're trying to do with our art. We are f facing a war against what I've called the mainstream, mainstream industry which locks out content, which locks out quality. You can continue complaining forever or you can do something about it. So what did we do about it? We formed an independent industry, or rather we're trying to, the same way Hollywood broke away from the Thomas Edison movement and all that. We're trying to also break away from the mainstream in our country, and we're like, fine, you don't want to buy our content, we'll create our content which we know is of better quality, and we'll still share our stories. So Kaleidoscope is um, actually the second short film I've done <clears throat> with Mau Mau. I wrote the script, uh, and it's directed by Martin Gidenji, and 
it's about the vicious cycle of abuse. What I'll, I'll show you right now is the trailer, but as I close, there's so much to talk about. We can go on forever. If I was to sit down and talk to you, we could stay for the whole day. Uh, but I would like to say the youth, and, uh, in the words of Aya Chebi, who is a Tunisian activist, I like what she says. The youth are the leaders of today. They're not the leaders of tomorrow. And people always say the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. I, I, I take Aya's words uh, with a lot of confidence and say the youth are leaders of today. And more specifically, the creatives are also the leaders of today. So thank you very much. I'll finish with um, the trailer to our short film. Oh, and by the way, I just got an email yesterday. It's actually going to be screened at the Crossing the Screen Festival in London. I will not be here, but it will be on 5th November. So if you get a chance, you may go and watch the full film, which, oddly enough, is being screened for the first time outside Kenya, which shouldn't be happening. Uh, but it, anyway, and it's also been shortlisted for the Cairo International Film Festival, which again is in November. So here goes. Thank you. How many more mistakes will I tolerate? 